I think it's time we get the Model T dug out. Which means I gotta move this boat anchor and a bunch of other junk. So I was using it as my daily, but I parked it a couple months ago because it's got a, uh, several issues that make it no longer drivable. So I gotta get those sorted out eventually. But uh, I think it should still run and uh, move, I hope. But we'll find out pretty quick here. does still run. Unfortunately the uh, cobbled together motor mounts finally gave out and so uh, the clutch is all, it's got like two inches of free play and everything's all kind of shifted over. So I gotta get new motor mounts for it and uh, there's a bunch of other stuff it needs as well so it's kind of a, kind of a dead duck until I get that big. No point in continuing to drive it. Uh, it didn't survive almost 90 years for me to screw it up because I'm too lazy to work on it so it'll sit here for now until I have money for that. Well, there it is, all dug out. This is a 1926 Ford Model T touring car. I bought this back in 2018, I believe. It was a bit of an impulse purchase. I had just uh, cut up and parted out my uh, Model A hot rod that I had built and wasn't really planning on getting any more early Fords. And then uh, this thing came up for sale uh, while I was at work actually and I left work early and just immediately went and bought it. It was advertised as a running and driving car and uh, well it wasn't really. It uh, barely ran and uh, wasn't really drivable at all. But I bought it anyways because uh, I just think Model T's are the, the coolest cars ever. I've always wanted one since I was a kid. You know, they really, there's there's no car more iconic than a Model T. A Model T is like the car. So, uh, you know, I don't care what anyone else says. This is, this is the most important car ever built. It just, without the Model T, there, there wouldn't, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have anything. So anyways, uh, I got the car driving and uh, there's a early video on my channel of the car driving around uh, the block I think. It was barely running still. Um
ended up getting the coils rebuilt and doing a little more work to it and getting it running half decent. As you can see, it's not quite original anymore. So what we're going for here is what's called a gow job or a soup job. Um, it's basically the predecessor to what became hot rods. So what happened with these Model Ts um, is, you know, some kid would get them and strip them all down, lower them, uh, soup up the engine a bit, and then, uh, you know, race them or bomb around in them or whatever. So this is kind of what happened, you know, back in the 20s or 30s or whatever with these cars. And so it's something I've always thought was really cool. And one of the main inspirations for what I was doing here is uh, a guy called Clayton Pattison. And his car was featured on the Jalopy Journal about uh, probably almost 10 years ago now. And I saw that and I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. So some of you guys might have seen the car on uh, Jay Leno's garage as well. Ever since I saw a car, I always had it in, in the back of my mind, and it's what was kind of the main uh, fuel for this this kind of thing that we did here. Once I got the car kind of running and drivable and whatever, and I thought it was okay, I kind of started this uh, transformation, I guess, in late 2019, and kind of went gung-ho on it for a few months, and the whole goal was to, uh, well, we were well on our way to having this thing, you know, all finished for, uh, the summer of 2020 and then you know sometime in february of 2020 well we won't go there but let's just say a bunch of stuff happened and uh this thing got put on the back burner so kind of the theme behind this was let's say some young guy picked up a model t you know in the uh, early 1930s worn out car basically exactly what i started with and then you want to you know obviously soup it up hop it up make a you know have some fun with it so uh strips off all the unnecessary body panels lowers it down maybe hops up the engine a bit that we didn't really get to that but uh you know just cuts it all down makes it light sees how fast he can go without really spending any money because obviously the young guy's not gonna have a lot of money so you know if you look back in old pictures and stuff there's a lot of this type of stuff that you'll see and so that's what we were going for we were trying to keep it all all forward you know not put like weird modern stuff on it or anything you know we're keeping it all period correct all basically pre-1930 or so parts what whatever guy would have had available back then and so we're not building a show car we we're just building like a fun beater the i did do a bunch of patch panels on the bottom there um and uh for all the metal, I actually kept the theme going and I used all old, old Ford metal to make the patch panels. I like the back panel, you can see it's kind of got a weird whoopty where we spliced it in. Well, that's the lower panel off like a 28, 29 Model A sedan. So I thought it would be pretty funny to kind of graph that in. And that's that line there is exactly where some farmer back in the day had cut the thing off. I got this panel, it was laying in another, I think, Model A that I had. So I just thought it'd be funny, you know, what's the what's guy gonna do back in the 30s? Well, he's just gonna hammer that in there, so that's exactly what I did, right? Where some farmer cut that panel off years and years ago, I, I welded it in just like that. So this is a whole thing, it's just kinda bits and pieces like that. You're just having fun with it. You know, we brushed on some red oxide primer on the outside and the plan was to uh, brush paint this thing black. For the wheels I found these really cool old, uh, these are hook wheels, I'm not too sure of the pronunciation of that, I think that H H O U K is the spelling, so I don't know. These are off a, like a, I think a late teens, early 20s overland car, but they fit the original 30 by uh, three and a half tires that were came with Model T's. The reason these tires were 30 by three and a half, in case you're not wondering, it's not a 30 inch rim. The way they used to measure tires is they would measure the actual diameter of the tire itself. And then the three and a half is the actual, your width there down to the rim. So that's kind of a, kind of a neat thing. But anyways, the, the hubs themselves are actually uh, bigger than the, uh, 
the Model T spindles, so the plan was to do some uh, cobbling there and put these wheels on because, you know, it's kind of another period thing. Back in the day, guys would put wire spoke wheels on their Model Ts. Obviously, the wood spokes aren't the greatest. So, we we're going to adapt these on there, and uh, these are really cool. They have these cool knockoff type, uh, type hubs on them. You can see there's a lock on here which fits into this groove. Kind of like so, you see that there? And then you just spin off the wrench. And that's what holds your your hub on. So I thought that would be a pretty, pretty neat thing. And then of course, because these things were pretty uh, gangly and tall back in the day, if you're gonna be doing any kind of racing or whatever, next thing to do would be to lower the car down. So basically I had the whole front suspension mocked up and just tack welded together. It still needed to be finish welded. But again, we we're using all early forward parts to do this. And this is what's called a suicide drop. There's a bunch of different ways of lowering a Model T back in the day. Uh, some people, they would weld a big perch up here and then have the spring out front. This is another way of doing it. The spring is actually behind here. And then that puts the axle out front, which lengthens your wheelbase. So what we did here is we used a Model T spring and reversed the spring eyes in a press. That's basically, originally the spring eyes are on the bottom. So we put them in a press and cranked it until the spring was reversed. And then what we did is we used Model A Ford wishbones, which are, uh, the axle is actually taller on a T. So what we did is we ground and filed these until they fit over top of the T um, axle. And we use those to locate it. Um, and then this is all kind of inspired by, uh, again, Clayton Pattison did the same, a similar thing on his Model T. His was a little more refined than this, but again, we were just keeping this thing crude and kind of period cracked. So then to uh, locate the spring, I used early Ford spring perches. And then again, this is all just tack welded on here. It's not, the plan was to, uh, well, the next step before I abandoned this project was to uh, pull the front end and fully weld it all, but didn't get to that stage obviously yet. So these are cut down early Ford spring perches. And I left this hole here because I was thinking about mounting some type of lever shocks because Model T's never had shocks. So I thought that would be pretty cool to, you know, incorporate that. And we also had to uh, drop our steering arm down. So I kind of cobbled together this, uh, this drop steering arm. The fun thing about a Model T is these things don't go fast enough or uh, whatever. You can get away with a lot of stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing on a normal car. So um, there's that. And then at the back here, um, a lot of guys, when they split wishbones, they use the uh, later Ford tie rod ends, but these are early Model A tie rod ends. And then, and then I uh, cut the, the ball off of the uh, tie rod, off a of Model A tie rod. And then again, this is all just tack welded together, but this is a 33 or 34 Ford wishbone end, like the end of it where it comes into the uh, cup or whatever. And I cut that in half. And then the plan was to fully weld all this, this ball in here and then kind of grind and shape it so it had this cool recess in it. But again, we were trying to keep all early Ford parts, you know, it's fairly common just to get a, a random chunk of metal and just blast it in there and then weld the ball on. But I kind of wanted something a little more refined with some shape to it. So it's kind of a cool detail there. So all those modifications drop the front end about five or six inches. Um, the only other thing I wanted to do, again, in addition to the shocks, was also build some kind of uh, pan hard bar just to keep the front from swaying side to side. Again, on this a low power car like this, I'm not sure it would be necessary, but I just thought it'd be not a terrible idea. So at the back here, I kind of uh, cheated a bit. There was a guy in, I think, California building these dropped 
cross members for Model T Speedsters and they were kind of patterned after, you know, what was available back in the day, you know, back in the 20s and stuff. You could open up a catalog and you'd buy literally everything to convert your Model T into a race car. So these brackets, these brackets were patterned after, you know, an old time accessory. So I bought those and uh, this drops the frame down, I think about five inches. And you can see they bolt into the frame there. And the reason they bolt in is, uh, not a lot of people know this, but the Model T frame is made of vanadium steel. And it's it's what they also used on their axles and a lot of other components. And it, it it's almost like a spring steel. It's designed to flex and bend, but it's not meant to be welded on. So that's why this is all bolted in. You know, it was pretty common back in the day for guys to do kickups like this and they would just weld everything and then the welds would crack and whatever and break and then obviously you got issues. So we we're also in the process of chopping down the windshield frame, but I wasn't totally happy with the height of it yet. I can't remember. I think I took out a couple inches and yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to take out a couple more or I was thinking about leaning these upper posts back a bit so it kind of had that kind of thing going on. I thought that would look kind of cool, but we never got that far. As far as the engine was concerned, I basically just wanted to make it a reliable runner. And uh, there's a couple of things. I, I, I just like to look at stuff. I'm not into going fast or anything. So my plan was just to uh, build a uh, lakes type header that came out the side. I thought that would be pretty cool. And then, uh, and then eventually maybe do like a high compression head and a couple of other things, but never got around to that. I was also gonna change out the rear end gears put in uh, you know something that get, got me a little more speed. Now I'd like to say that I dug this thing out uh, so that we get back to working on it. But uh, the reality is is there's a uh, truck and trailer on its way right now to come pick this up and take it to a new owner. The car has been sold. You know I knew back in uh, 2020 when I put this thing on ice that it was a dead duck but you know two years two years or over two years now it's been sitting and you know the time finally came to just uh, let it go. Model T's are still my favorite car, they always will be, but um, I think the responsible thing to do is to pass it on to someone else who's going to actually do something with it because otherwise the car is just going to sit here for an eternity. So kind of two reasons why I've chosen to part ways with it. Um, first is I need the space. Um, last winter I had that, uh, some of you might remember I had that 1950 Chevy in here and I had sold the thing and I was basically storing it in my garage for free, which the problem with that is while it's here I didn't have any space to work on anything else. And so that uh, really kind of hurt me pretty bad. It was like a, a month I had that stupid thing in here and then the guy, uh, it's a long story, but anyways, I, I've determined that I need at least two stalls open in my garage, you know, during the winter. So I just can't have, you know, personal projects taking up space here, especially if they're not getting worked on. I think there's more than two reasons actually, but we're just gonna go list them all off, so. Um, I could easily have this car running and driving, you know, in a weekend. It was running and driving car and I put it away and it would run and drive again without, with minimal work. But there's a big difference between a running and driving car and a car that actually goes down the road and can be used as a car. And I live in a residential area, so I have no use for a car that I can't be used as a car. So to make this thing into a car that I could use, is going to be at least six thousand dollars Canadian worth of parts plus all my labor, probably a couple months of labor to uh, to make it happen. So for six thousand dollars Canadian, I can fix all the issues on that thirty-five Chevy, as well as do a ton of work and get that my thirty-six Chevy truck a lot closer to being on the road. Um, we won't show that in this video, but you can go back on my channel. There's videos on the thirty-six Chevy as well so 
that's a project that I'd much rather uh, down the road because the 36 Chevy truck and the 35 Chevy Master are both cars that I can drive every day in a residential area and that's the plan for both of them. This is something that I can only drive, you know, on nice days and basically go to the store and back. Other than that, it, it's, it's useless to me. Even as a fully functional car, it's really not practical for me. So the other reason I was putting this car together is there's a couple events in the States that I wanted to take it to. One was the uh, Race of Gentlemen in New Jersey. I went down as a spectator, I think in 2017, and it's like an unbelievable event. So I really thought it'd be cool to bomb around in this thing down there. But uh, And then there's another event called the Colorado Hill Climb, obviously in Colorado, and uh, that was a really cool looking event as well. So, but, uh, well, as you know, the world's kind of changed place in the past couple of years. So again, there's really no longer any purpose for this car, at least to me. And the final reason is also money related as well. Um, due to a bunch of stuff going on, I'm pretty short on cash at the moment. And I have another project that we'll be featuring on the channel that I'm pretty excited about, but I have to go on a road trip to pick it up. And it's something that I want to make run and drive as well. So all of that, the road trip and getting the vehicle and then working on it is all going to cost money. So I needed to free up some cash for that. It's a, it's not a project that I'm going to be keeping. It's something I'm going to be flipping and selling, but as they say, it takes money to make money. So, um, something I picked up a few months ago and the guy's been gracious enough to store it in his yard for me but I really got to get out there and pick it up so I need some cash for that and the uh, thing with Model T's is they uh, they're basically worthless so I, I ended up selling this thing for exactly what I paid for it like three or four years ago so there is no uh, no profit at all I've got thousands and thousands of dollars tied up in parts of this and like I said it would need even more to make it into a feasible car for me at least. So right now the plan is to get caught up on all the other projects and flips and stuff and then we want to go pretty hard on the uh, 36 Chevy truck get that one a lot closer to being done and as well as get the 35 back into a roadworthy car which is the, the smallest project I guess. So thanks for watching and sorry for the short boring video. Um, I just wanted to document this before it left. You know, I've owned, I think, close to 60 vehicles, maybe over now, I haven't counted in a while. But uh, with most of them, there's not even any proof that I ever owned it or that it ever even existed. So uh, the cool thing about YouTube, I guess, is I can document a lot of this stuff just for my own personal, you know, archives. So um, thanks again for uh, sticking around to the end and watching if you have. Um, that's uh, and I'll say goodbye to the tea. I got no regrets about getting rid of it. It was the right decision, not just for me, but for the car. And we got to think about doing the best thing for the car as well. So once I decide to get rid of something, that's it. You know, it's uh, I don't really miss vehicles once I get rid of them. It's they're gone, and that's it. So we'll uh, 